Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, one of the things I remember was that Allah has given us a choice as amana, and it is for us to do either good or bad with that choice. Exactly. So let's build on that. So um, uh, the discourse before, we had established that there were five amanas, one that was given to us in the spiritual world and four that were given to us in this world. Um, so really quickly, if everyone can say it in one voice, what were, the, what, what were the four amanas that were given in this world? Body, mind, heart, soul, i.e. nafs. So those four amanas were given to us in this world, then you have your spirit, which is, um, has been given the, effectively the amana of free will. Now these four entities, or these, sorry, these four amanas, interact with which four entities? So again, if we do it in the rank and do it together. Allah, yes. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Other humans, yes. And other creation, precisely. And which uh, interaction with which amana and with, with, with which entity did we discuss yesterday? The body interacting with which entity? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we also covered Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Any other entities we covered? Human beings and other creation, exactly. Now, um, uh, just, taking, um, just taking the entity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what exactly, there was a key word um, which Uncle Ramzan picked on now as well, which addressed how your body interacts with that entity, which was what? Yeah, Brother Ibrahim just said positively or negatively. And uh, can someone give me an example of how you, or the examples that were used and how your body interacts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Someone raise their hands. <coughs> Preferably someone that's closer to me. as uh, with, with the body is uh, your, your prayer, your ibadah. It's the positive, and the negative is if you... Uh, do sin with the body. It can be drinking, alcohol. So, so broadly, the, um, uh, the brother covered it. So the, what you do positively with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is i.e. his commands, that which he has asked you to do, and negatively would be going against those commands. Any other examples that someone wants to highlight? Okay, so let's moving on to the next entity our body interacts with, which, with it, which is with who? So, so, and someone give me an example of how your body would interact with that, with the solar cell. By following the sunnah of the Prophet And just that anyone want to elaborate? Well, Abid, were you here yesterday? So, so, for example, um, dressing in the way of the sunnah is a way of uh, positively, uh, uh, positively for the Prophet Precisely, dressing is one option. What else was the um, spoken about Sheikh Hamad Abag? He emphasised a lot, actually in contrast to the dressing, which is a good point to mention. He also spoke about the uh, inwardly, that you have to have the inwardly as the Prophet uh, that if you... If you dress up like him, but don't, uh, that your akhlaq is not like him, that the uh, clothes will not benefit you, um, then he gave some examples. Yeah, just the uh, same thing along what the, the Prophet just mentioned. So um, it's also very important to have that love for um, other individuals. That's a very inherent inward quality of the Prophet. So, I'm correct. So, um, ideally, following the Sunnah of the Prophet inwardly and outwardly, and there was a lot of, there was a strong emphasis on the inward um, Sunnah. And why was that a strong emphasis? Because if you're dressing outwardly, i.e., if you're effectively acting as an ambassador of the Prophet in your attire, but inwardly you're effectively like a shaitan, then there's a stark contrast in there, and you're going against that which the Prophet has advised. Um, uh, now, what was the next entity that we t discussed about the body interacting with? Yeah, someone raise their hands, just go through that.
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از دا ایڈ اسپورٹس موٹیویشن انکریجمنٹ فار دا ہومین ماشاء اللہ اینی مومن الیبریٹ gave some examples by uh, not be harmful to other people, uh, help other people, help the widows, help the orphans. Um, yes. Exactly. And the opposite to that would be negatively in, um, impacting on, on human beings. And the final entity the body um, uh, interacts with? Creation. Creation. And someone want to give me some examples around that? Someone different, preferably? Assalamu alaikum. Um, in a positive way, uh, uh, the interaction, uh, body interact with the animals um, by protecting them. And uh, in a negative way, uh, we uh, interact with animals by killing them for no reason. And, uh, Uh, polluting uh, the environment, basically. Hamza, exactly. Um, uh, so, broad, so to summarize, we covered the, the four earthly amanas interacting with the four entities based on the fundamental spiritual mana, which is the ability to have freedom of will. Any questions about what was covered yesterday? Does anyone not understand what was covered yesterday? So, okay, so we're going to take a moment now just to review your notes for the time that you've had and then just to get yourself in the mindset and the framework that you're in the presence of Allah and that you're looking to receive knowledge into your heart. So knowledge is transferred from heart to heart via a sunnah, that's our tradition. And, uh, and so just, just become in the mindful of that and also think that whenever, whatever discourse is given, whether it's something you have or haven't heard before, that you always come effectively has an empty glass, so you're looking to have the knowledge poured into your heart. And that's extremely important to have the adab that is required when, um, uh, um, when attaining knowledge. So just for a moment, we'll just... Uh, um, okay, we'll just wait for the, for the shaykh and just, just spend these few moments just reflecting. Sorry.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله بيد فضل أن رحمة أفعل جل مجده we are trying to understand the essence of the path to Allah, the, the essence of Islam, and the essence of how to attain closeness of Allah Jalla Majduhu. And up to now, as you were summarizing, if you look at the screen, that we have mentioned that one is our reality, which is the spirit. And then we have been given four amanat trusts by Allah Jalla Majduhu temporarily. They are not us. They are just things given by Allah Jalla Majduhu. And then with four entities, they react and interact to, and we mention these are the four Allah and the Prophet of Islam, human beings, and creation. So Allah Jalla Majduhu ne hame paida kiya hum kya hai, hum ruh hai, us ruh ko char amanatein de di, jism, dil, dimaag, or nafs. اور ان چار مانتوں کو استعمال کرنے کا طریقہ چار واسطوں سے چار چیزوں کے ساتھ دے دیا وہ کون ہیں دو ہستیاں ایک تو اللہ جل مجدہو اور نبی علیہ السلام تیسرا انسان تو تھا مخلوق یسٹرڈے وی کور دیٹ دیر ٹو ٹائپس آف انٹریکشن اینڈ we cover the interaction of the body. Kal ham ne jism ke mutalqa baat ki thi ke yeh do kism ke talqaat rakh sakta hai har ek ke saath Allah paak ke saath bhi do tarah ke Nabi alayhi salam ke saath bhi insanoon ke saath bhi makhluk ke saath to jism aart kism ke talqaat rakhta hai so the body har eight types of relationship is in totality Today we are going to discuss the mind, the mind relation to Allah Jalla Majduhu. 
that how the aql and mind has inter interaction with those four entities with Allah Azza wa Jal, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam and the human beings and the creation. So first the positive introduction of the mind with Allah Jalla Majduhu. What is that presence? This is what the mind can do. Presence means that in your mind, in your conscious, you stay in this thought more often, if not constantly, more and more, that Allah is with me, He is seeing me, and He is hearing me. The mag jo hai wo مصبت تعلق اللہ جل و مجدود سے اچھا تعلق کیسے رکھ سکتا ہے ایک تو یہ کہ وہ حضوری میں رہے کہ اللہ میرے ساتھ ہے مجھے دیکھ رہا ہے سن رہا ہے سیکنڈ is awareness that اللہ جل و مجدود exists and awareness of his power To think about his obedience, meaning the intellect should not be used to question Allah Jalla Maiduhu, it should be used, how can I put in practice the commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? So, Akal ka ye kaam nahi hai, wo jane neki kya, badi kya hai, wo to Allah Paak. نے وحی کے ذریعے بتا دیا عقل کا کام ہے کہ اس وحی پر عمل کرے اس وحی پر عمل کرنے کا طریقہ سوچے کہ میں کیسے کر سکتی ہوں so the job of the intellect is to think about how and plan how can I be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can I avoid following shaitan and the nafs and dunya so the aql can plan that's why the prophet alayhi salatu was salam said لَيْسَ الْعَقْلُ تَتَّدْبِيرِ there is no wisdom like planning now if you want to act wisely then plan and plan means thinking about the end thinking about the end result, what you want, and then aligning everything with that and premeditate any obstacles which will come, any unexpectancies, any difficulties, and have a contingency plan, have a plan how to overcome them. So planning is half success. Shaitan plans. Now the bigger shayateen are caged, are imprisoned, but they don't stop planning. They, th they think they can still plan actually what they're going to do after they come on Eid day. So they're still planning, planning and unfortunately, unfortunately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal has mentioned in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَدَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا His planning is working in 90% of cases, humanity, me and you are following him and 90% we sometimes follow him. We do things which actually destroy our good deeds, our relationship with Allah Jalla Majdu. So, shayateens are basically not gods or anything. They are one creation called jinn. They have intellect. Human beings have a superior intellect than them. 
तानू के पास अगर दिमाग है तो अल्लाह पा ने इंसानों को उससे भी बड़ा दिमाग दिया हुआ है तो हम भी अपना दिमाग इस्तेमाल करें वो प्लान कर रहा है ही इज प्लानिंग वी शुड प्लान हाउ टू पुट हिज प्लान एक्चुअली हाउ टू स्टॉप हिज प्लान और कैरिंग आउट हिज प्लान एट दिस से failing to plan is planning to fail so if we are not planning we are already planning to fail failing to plan is planning to fail so aqal can one aqal thing can do regarding allah jalla ma do that how i am getting closer to allah subhanahu what do i need to do which people i need to abandon which habits which are things which i are not good for me this is the job of the aql the intellect in relation to allah jalla majduhu think about be how i can please allah jalla majduhu how can i actually please and then get in janna forever and ever so this planning so here you are also taught those people who are going to do halqa after meaning the you know the how to get closer to allah that's all about planning like for example yesterday or the day before you were shown the journey of human soul that's planning that what's happening where what you should do now and then this is planning in the body the mind the heart to plan how they can execute the commands of allah and they can stop from the disobedience of allah jalla majduhu so this is one way also of inter planning to come closer planning to be obedient another is remembrance the zikr of allah jalla majdu the mind can also remember allah jalla majdu and mind remembrance is very very powerful because the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi said one of the highest level of iman and worship al ihsanu an ta'bud allah ka annaka tara when jibril al islam asked ya rasulullah what is perfection of iman and islam and all this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you worship allah as though you are seeing him or he is seeing you for sure now this is the job this is the function of the aql your eyes can't think your hands can't think so this imagination concept is very very powerful and this is what the brain can do and there are different parts of the brain that's why some people sometimes get confused the left part right part other they have different answers one part thinks logically the other part thinks emotionally so that's why person is double minded sometimes so who decides what to do is you and if you decide according to the revelation then you make the right choice so one part of your brain says do i should not do this another one say yeah do this different parts so remembrance this is very powerful in one hadith the prophet al islam said do amal when you practice do any amal look as though allah you, you are seeing allah jalla majduhu when you practice something or allah and in other hadith third he said live your life as though you are seeing allah o oh, if not and then allah seeing you so three stages normally we hear one only one version of the hadith hum aam taur par ek hi wo hadith ka jo ki riwayat sunte hain baki teen riwayat ek to hai ki allah ki ibadat is tarah karo goya allah ko dekh rahe ho dusre hai amal is tarah karo ki goya allah ko dekh rahe ho ya allah tumhe dekh raha hai teesra ye hai ki zindagi is tarah guzaro ki goya tum allah ki huzuri mein ho aur allah tumhe dekh raha so now this will begin with ye shuru kahan se hoga 
زندگی نہیں گزار سکتا جو دس منٹ نماز میں نہیں اللہ کی حضوری میں رہے رہ سکتا وہ زندگی کس طرح گزارے گا پرسن ہو کین ناٹ سو دیز آر ایکچولی تھری اسٹیجز آف دی ریمبرنس آف اللہ دا پریزنس آف اللہ فرسٹلی بیکاز ورشپ از فار اونلی شارٹ ٹائم یو آر پرینگ فرسٹ پریئر فائیو منٹس ٹین منٹس سو فرسٹلی یو آر آس ٹو بی ان پریزنس ان ریمبرنس اونلی ان پریئر عمل عبادہ ان ان عبادہ ان تعبود اللہ عبادہ ہوں وہاں تو کوشش کرے پانچ منٹ کے لیے اللہ مجھے دیکھ رہا ہے میں اللہ کو دے گویا میں اللہ کو دے اس امیجنیشن سو وین یو ہیو ڈن ان یور سلا دا اسپرچل لیول آف سلا یو ہیو خشو ان سلا زکا عبادہ دین پروفر علیہ السلام سیڈ ناؤ وین یو ڈو اینی ایکٹ تھنک اللہ از لوکنگ ایٹ یو اینڈ یو آر سینگ اللہ اینی ورلڈلی ایکٹ ایز ویل اینی ورلڈلی ایکٹ It is said that Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz radiallahu anhu, the one of the great khulafa, great awliya, that he could not come have intimacy with his wife because of the strength of presence of Allah. He would faint thinking like you, for example, would not take off clothes in front of other people and you would not actually do any acts in front of other people. He had such strong presence such times of angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, his wife said that he could not, he just would faint away. And Imam Abdul Wahab Sharani, Shazali, he said, a wali does not become a wali until his presence of Allah is there like in Salah, is same as when he is sleeping with his wife. When they did the, the same, the presence of Allah, then he is a wali a khas, and then he becomes a wali. This is the trait of the friend of Allah, that they never forget Allah Jalla Majdu wherever they are. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ He is with you wherever you are. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَسِيرٌ Allah is aware. We think we've forgotten, now Allah is not looking at us. It's not the case. This is not the case. So like Imam Abdul Wahab Sharani is mentioning one of the qualities of certain awliya, that they're the presence of Allah. We are struggling to ha find it in Salah, and they are having this even in state of sleeping, in state of orgasm. There's such a pleasure, their relationship with Allah does not cut money. which is the one in dunya is the highest form of pleasure when everything Sayyidina Abdul Aziz the Baq rahmahullah mentioned really the ghusl which becomes farz it is for this reason that the person completely forgets and gets cut away from Allah at that time that's why ghusl becomes farz he said one of the spiritual reasons so we are many times even without sleeping With our wives, actually, we are completely cut away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in the salah, we are cut away almost. Why? Because no one has asked. That's why we gave you the forms that if you are having problem, trouble, having khashu in salah, in three, four months, if you use the methodology, your salah will be full with presence. آپ نے پوچھا ہی نہیں ہے ہم پوچھتے ہی نہیں ہیں اگر آپ پوچھیں کہ مجھے نماز میں مسئلہ ہے مجھے خیال زیادہ آتے ہیں دنیا کے میں اللہ کے بارے میں سوچنا چاہتا ہوں تو آئی وانٹ ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ اللہ جل مدو اف یو آر یو کین بی ٹوٹ دا میتھڈالوجی ان فیو منتھس اونلی یو ول ہیو ٹوٹل پریزنس آف اللہ جل مدو ان سالا نائنٹی وی آلسو ٹیچ ایون دا اسپرچل اسینٹک لیول آف صلاح ایک نماز اس طرح بھی آپ نماز یہاں پڑھتے ہیں وہ نماز آپ کی معراج بن جاتی ہے بیکمز یور اسینشن لائک اٹ از سیڈ ان عربک اسلا تو معراج المومنی اٹ بیکمز اسینشن دیٹ یور اسپرٹ ٹریولس ٹو مدینہ تو منورہ اینڈ یو کین بیسکلی ویژولائز دیٹ یور اسپرٹ از دیئر ان صلاح سو یو آر سینگ ظہر پریئر اللہ اکبر 
and your spirit in Medina, sometime in Aqsa, sometime in the first sky, sometime in the second heaven, sometime in Jannah, sometime under the arsh of Allah Jalla Majduhu. Firstly, it with thought, imagination, and then actually it have its mirage, actually the spirit is there. So Istara, you can even learn that many of the brothers who are sitting here, they, will learn, they have learned some of those actually levels. یہ نہیں کہ یہ کوئی بہت خاص بندے جو چلے گئے یا ابھی آئیں گے انہوں نے سیکھنا ہے آپ میں سے کتنے لوگ ہیں جنہوں نے وہ سیکھا ہوا ہے پہلے یہ جو روحانی میرا یعنی وہ نماز جو بندے کی روح جب بندہ نماز میں ہوتا ہے اس کی روح میراج پر چلی جاتی جاتی ہماری بھی سب کی میراج پر ہے لیکن کوئی اس دنیا کی میراج پہ جا رہا ہے کوئی گھروں کی میراج سیر کر رہا ہے Everyone's going, going on Miraj somewhere, but there's a way to go there. So if you say, how can I go to Kaaba? Like you go into your house and at your workplace and wandering around with the friend. It's easy. It's just a matter of what, how you are trained. But spirit is powerful according to the spiritual world. So this is a wonderful thing. Imagination, Rasulullah mentioned imagine some people Oh, what will imagine? Imagination is the most strongest thing and which can help you in getting closer to Allah Jalla Maidu. Because Prophet Islam, what is the, he said, that, imagine, an ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tara. It's as though Allah is looking, watching, you are looking at Allah. Really, you are not, you are just imagining. But that imagining becomes reality. After some time, reality meaning not that he can see Allah, meaning the state, the presence. So this is where imagination is thought. Thought, if it's shaitanic, it harm you. If it is a good vibe, it will benefit you. So like many of you do the spiritual mirage, and they keep saying, and I do not like that at all. I think I'm imagining. Well, if you're imagining about Kaaba, it's good. What do you want to imagine about shaitan? I think I'm imagining about Kaaba, so that's good. That's what you want. Plus, I don't even know what, that everything I'm seeing, I'm imagining. Even what I'm seeing you now, I'm imagining. Do you know what you are seeing also, this imagining? It's in the mind, it's not because the light is coming, light rays are coming. You can't see anything, the light rays are coming. They hit your eyes and then that is changed into electrical signals and then they go in the brain and there is an image created in the brain and that image you are seeing now even. So in actual fact like that, what you are seeing, you are not in the room, the room is in you. All this picture which you are seeing now even when you are sitting here, you are seeing inside your mind, you are not seeing outside. From outside only rays of light. You can ask scientists, you can ask people who know only rays of lights are coming. And mind, a, it's only an effect. Like screen, it's exactly like the projector. That actually the rays of the projector are hitting there. There's nothing in the, project, uh, in the screen. So mind screen is empty. So rays of light are coming on the screen of our brain and mind, which center of vision, and I am seeing some. So everything I'm imagining, so you can imagine without, you, you close your eyes as well, you can imagine. So it's a, something which is very powerful, and you can use that for in remembrance, in relation to Allah Jalla Majduhu, planning, awareness, presence, and once your brain, your mind changes, your body changes. Your body just follows it. So main, the master is there actually sitting. So this is like a positive relationship with Allah Jalla Majduhu. So mind can have wonderful relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Second is negative interaction. If you have negative interaction with Allah Jalla Majduhu, yeah, of the mind, that is what? Negative, manfi ta'allak Allah paak se. 
That is, for example, forgetfulness. If you are in ghafla, forgetful, you forgot the presence of Allah. Forgetting Allah Jal Majdu, who is seeing you, Allah is with you. Forgetfulness, that is, then you are far away from Allah Jal Majdu. Thoughts and love of dunya, love of the world. And dunya, you can see here, car, money, these are the forms of actually dunya, but this is not dunya as I keep saying to you. Dunya is whatever distracts you from Allah Jalla Majdu. So money is not dunya, but if you think about money in such a way, money has become a distraction for you, then is money is dunya. Wife is not dunya, but if she has become a distraction for you, she is dunya. Even knowledge, if it become distraction for you from Allah, that is dunya. Even salah, salah is worship. But if you worship because so you can get the praise of people, so it has become dunya for you. Reciting Quran is worship, but if you are doing it for just do the sake of worldly matters and it distracts you from Allah just for fame and name, that's become dunya. Conference, zaviya, center, anything. Anything can actually be uh, turned into dunya once it distracts you. So it's very uh, dunya is, but why we see money, car, other things? Because normally it's these things which distract the person. But uh, for a person who is purified, for, for him everything reminds him from uh, to Allah Jalla Majdu. Everything reminds him of Allah Jalla Majdu. Even worldly blessings, and they remind him. When he looks at the blessing, he sees the blesser. He thinks about the blesser, Mun'aim. When he sings Ni'mah, he thinks about the Mun'aim, that who have actually. So you should be careful. Happiness, after what we are, that is just name of releasing some chemicals, dopamine and others, they say, serotonin, that is released, the chemical are released, you say, I have good mood. That is, it's all these, they're really, not, no, no happiness really there. When you say, I have very mo good mood, I'm very happy. What's it? Some chemicals have been released in your mind and you say, yeah. but the real happiness come when Allah's presence is released in the spirit. And the heart, that is the region. This is artificial. This is still like drugs. The happiness which we are, it is like drug. drugs. When you take certain drugs, certain chemical release and you feel good. You do exercise, they say this chemical dopamine and other get released and you feel good. There are many things you see that chemical and you try to be. So this is like an artificial happiness. The real peace and happiness in the heart mind and spirit come when a person's heart and inner self is connected with Allah Jalla Majdu. It's not in need of these chemicals or anything or drugs or anything. That's the real thing. So aaj tak jo science, psychology, science, whatever it have understood of happiness is only release of some chemicals and actually so it's a kind of an artificial what they, that's why they give you Antidepressants, what they do? They do these things. So that is still drugs. Sometimes natural drugs, sometimes unnatural drugs. But the real peace and pleasure does, is not dependent upon these chemicals. Because when these chemicals are not here, when you person will be in Akhira, Jannah, Awliya, Allah, in dunya, they get that kind of peace, that kind of uh, tranquility, which is not to do with them. So, so the dunya, the thoughts of dunya, meaning anything which distracts you away from Allah Jalla Majduhu, it will take you away from peace as well. It will take you away from peace. Yes, you should earn dunya, earn money, earn 
marry uh, and do all these things actually, but in order to come closer to Allah Jalla Majduhu, in order to reach higher level of existence. This world is called dunya, as, it's, as, you, can hear, as you can see here, dunya. In Arabic, dunya comes from the word dal noon, which means ya lower. Dal lower. Dr. Aziz, you remember we discussed in the morning that dal also means lower. So the word adna and dana really coming from that uh, in uh, indicative meaning that dunya lower world. So by literally dana adna like in Urdu is also used adna. Wala nadikan min azabil adna dun al azabil akbar. Adna Urdu may be stamalota. It means ye adna quality ka paper hai. Ye adna quality ka phone hai. Ye lower quality phone. In Arabic, it's used also adna for lower. And from that root word comes the word dunya. So everything is low quality here. It's a lower world. It's lower level of existence. And one is the higher level of existence and better level of existence. That is the life of the spirit, akhira. Well, akhira to khayr. Akhira is higher level of existence and permanent, forever level of existence, not transient level of existence. This dunya is like you're watching a film. It will soon finish after two and a half hours. And when the screen will be off, where is the enjoyment and thing? That's happened in the time of death, the screen becomes off. It shuts down. So you can't see. Now you see other things. You see angels, you see the reality, because you were actually seeing something of the lower world, because just to test you, just to see how you do. So lower world, lower life, higher level of existence, better level of existence, Permanent level of existence, higher, permanent, and better level. In dunya, we are also trying to do. A person who have small house, he is trying to have a bigger house, better level of existence. Who have a better house, he is trying to have a mansion. So dunya, are we not trying for that? Everyone is working for, for that matter. He has a car, he wants higher level of car. Better level of car, better level of driving. He has ma married, he wants to marry, he wants to marry better women. Now he is married, he wants to ma marry by a higher level of better level thing. But this is dunya, you don't get what you want. This is, this is the test, testing part. This is a testing station, it's not resting station and enjoyment station. Dunya is not resting. Station, it is testing stations. Here you are test. So you are given, you are given what Allah has destined for you. But in Akhirah, you will get what you want for yourself. This is a difference in dunya. Imagine, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the dunya that He has destined the risk. You can't get any more. He has destined whatever. The dunya, worldly things will happen to you. Yes, you have choice over, don't forget that. You be even in choice over good and bad, but other things you don't have choice over. Allah has destiny, your risk, your money, your life. But in Akhirah, there is nothing like this. In Akhirah, Allah says, Walakum fiha ma tashtahi anfusukum. There it will be whatever you wish and desire. There it will be whatever you wish. Here it is what Allah has willed. That's what actually you get here. So here even very rich person, if he wants to eat, maybe the doctor say you can't eat, you have diabetes, you can't eat these types of food. So he has everything, but he can't eat. He has access to women, but he loses the ability, the age, he can't actually benefit from them. For example, he can drive whatever he wants, 
Yeah, very good. But now he is such old, his hands are shaking. He can't drive. He can't see. He can't He has a lot of money, business, but he's lost. He's losing his memory. So here it is not even if you have, you can't actually benefit from that. If you don't have the best women, best money, best house, you can't enjoy. Sometimes we spend all our life to pay a mortgage for our house. When the time to live comes, we leave. When it becomes yours, you leave. We are married all our life. We are fighting, infighting, quarreling. And when we understand, we are already 90 years old that we should be living peacefully. But now, that's why you see normally the old people are living peacefully. They've understood, but it's too late now. It is too late. The best part to understand is whilst you are young, when you can enjoy. After you are 80 years old, and then if you understood what is the really, there's not much benefit. But people have desire. That's why I say that you normally see people who are driving very, very like cars like this. And it's uh, old aged people normally. Youngsters, they are trying to earn money, do business, and earn mostly. So. Because their desire remains in their heart, so after 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, maybe they've made money. So now, although they're sitting in a very big car, but their hand, they have <coughs> number 10 glasses in the hand actually are moving, it's not actually any. But what they are doing is they are fulfilling their embedded desire in. They are embedded in desire. But Allah Jalla Mahidu said, yes, I have created you, and I will fulfill your every wish. You will be young forever. You will be living forever. You will have infinite resources. You don't have to work. You say, be, and it will be. That's what Allah wants to give us. Shaitan wants to give us dunya. This is a lower deal. It's a lower model. It's artificial. Allah wants to give us the real deal. Shaitan wants to give us the fake deal and we have fallen for his deal. And now we are at the end. Normally when people are at the end, the children got married, they've gone into their own houses, their spouses sometimes die, they being a pensioner, they have money in bank account, but they're living alone, there's no one visiting them, no, nor they, if they did not connect to Allah Jalla Majduhu, they are just lost to one person. They can't be taken to hospital. And children still will come to them if they have money into account to get those. They still like, I can have that house, I can have that money. And when that's gone, then they completely abandon you like actually tissue paper. That's how some of the uh, children, they behave with their parents. But those who value, the more older they get, the more weaker they get, the more service they do, the more obedient they become, and the more service they come into the parents. So anyway, they, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the thoughts of dunya, lower world, and focusing on dunya, being distracted, that actually is negative. Allah does not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like dunya because it is lower thing. Allah doesn't like. He is Allah. He likes Allah thing. He is higher and he is perfect and he likes better things. That's why he likes Akhira. He doesn't like dunya. It's lower thing. He doesn't like lower actually thing. He is Allah because he knows it's fake. He knows he has created it. It's a test only. It's only thing. There is a story in the books about a wali, a saintly person. He said, uh, he used, when he used to eat, he didn't use his one finger, his finger. He used to use other fingers. Another person, his friend came once and he asked that, why you don't use this finger? He said, this is a secret between me and Allah. یہ میرے اور اللہ کے درمیان راز کی بات ہے میں کیوں نہیں کھاتا اس انگلی سے تو وہ بھی ولی تھے انہوں نے کہا ہمیں بھی بتا دے فائدہ ہو جائے tell us we can benefit as well 
This is a wali who used to live in India. Naqshbandi uh, Sheikh. So he said that in the alam kashf in the alam when Allah Zawajal revealed another world to me once, what happened? That I saw a jungle. I saw a jungle. Main ek jungle dekha bohut bada. And there were hundreds and thousands of people in that jungle. And hundreds and thousands of people in that jungle, they were got round, some were surrounding someone, they were looking, they were trying to go forward in the crowd. Wo kehne lage ki maine ek dafa jungle dekha jisme lakhon log the aur har ek koshish kar raha tha aage jaane ki. So he said, I thought, what they are looking for? So I went forward and saw a woman sitting on a throne, covered, very beautiful clothes. کہتے میں نے درمیان میں جا کے دیکھا تو ایک عورت تخت پہ بیٹھی ہے اور اس نے پردہ اوپر خش کیا ہوا ہے گھونگٹ بڑا خوبصورت بڑی خوشبویں آ رہی ہیں بڑی چمک دمک ہے اٹس ویری ویری بیوٹیفل کلوتھنگس سو آئی سو دس ویمن ان دا مڈل اینڈ ملینز پیپل اینڈ ہی سیز ان دوز پیپل آئی سی آل کیٹیگریز آئی سو بزنس مین ورکنگ پیپل لیبر پیپل اولا ماں اینڈ ادرز Doctors, politicians, businessmen, different categories were all were there. And he said, I looked at this woman, I said, La. He said, La hawla wala kuha. They all got together because for, for, to see this woman to go near to her. So he turned back. Wo us orat ko dekha, to unho ne la hawla par ke un wapsi shuru kar di. He came back from the jungle towards his house. As he came out of the jungle, he saw, he heard some footsteps coming behind him. And when he looked, he saw the same woman. Now that was another surprise for him. That millions of people are coming closer to her just to get a glance and they are not. And she has come, she said, when he saw the woman coming behind him, he ran. Because person can get in fitna. He ran, انہوں نے وہ دوڑے اور اپنے حجرے میں آ کے دروازہ بند کر لیا And because he asked her, who are you, why, why, why are you coming behind me, go actually to those people who are, who, he said, I want to serve you, he said, I don't want need any service. So he came to his hujra. So after he locked the door, like now we have windows, air conditions, In ancient times, they used to have for fresh air, uh, they had certain openings in the walls so that the fresh air comes. So through very small holes where wind, a kind of smoke started coming inside and that smoke came in front of him and it turned into that woman again. Now he was more surprised. تو روشن دانوں سے دھواں آ کے وہ عورت بن کے پھر بیٹھ گئی میرے سامنے میں تو پھر حیران ہو گیا تو شی اسٹارٹڈ سینگ شی سیٹ دا ڈونٹ بی اے فریڈ فرام می آئی ایم دنیا آپ ڈرے نہیں میں دنیا ہوں اینڈ آل دوز پیپل یو ہیو سین اراؤنڈ می دے آر مائی لورس Although they are using different tactics, politician is using politics, Alim is using his ilm, Amel is using his taweez, Naat Khan is using his naat, businessman is using his, but they all want me. They just different colors, different tactics, many of them have lied. They're not the real people. They're using different ways, but they, after all, they want me. After the politician, they they want me. Businessmen want me. Normal people want me. Meaning those are who who are dressed who have love of dunya. They all want me. They, it is just different robes they are wearing. Some is becoming religious. Some is becoming sheikh. Some is becoming natha. Some is becoming qari. Some is becoming businessmen. It's different colors only. But really, they want me. And all these are my lovers. 
तो उसने कहा दुनिया कि मैं दुनिया हूँ ये सारे लोग मेरे चाहने वाले हैं ये जो आपने देखे लाखों करोड़ों जिसमें कारोबारी भी ओलामा सियासत सारे मुझे चाहते हैं सो द शेख सेट टू है वेल गो बैक टू द वंस हु लव यू गो टू द वंस हु लाइक्स यू वाट आर यू डूइंग हियर तो उन्होंने फरमाया कि जाओ फिर जो तुम्हें पसंद करते हो उनके पास जाओ मेरे पास क्यों आई हो शी सेड एक्चुअली आई एम ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द क्रिएशन ऑफ अल्लाह आई एम वन ऑफ द मखलूक ऑफ अल्लाह वन ऑफ द खल्क वन ऑफ द क्रिएशन अल्लाह क्रिएटेड मी एंड आई ऑल्सो वर्शिप अल्लाह मैं दुनिया हूं लेकिन मैं इबादत अल्लाह की करती हूं वेन अल्लाह क्रिएटेड मी आई वॉज Hi, up, not here on this earth. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said to me, "Now, O Dunya, go down on the face of the earth, and I am now expressed in the form of money, women, attraction, all these these ways." And Allah commanded me two things. Allah said, "Man khada mana fakhdi me, whoever serves me, serve him." तुम दुनिया ने कहा कि मुझे तो मैं तो अल्लाह की मखलूक हूँ मैं भी अल्लाह की इबादत करती हूँ लेकिन अल्लाह ने मुझे हुक्म दिया है कि ज़मीन पर जाओ और वहाँ मुख्तलिफ रंगों में फैल जाओ आजमाइश के लिए या अल्लाह करना क्या है जो अपने आशिक है उनको जलील करना है और जो मेरे आशिक है उनकी खिदमत करनी है ये है तुम्हारी ड्यूटी सो द दुनिया वॉज कमांडेड दैट एवर serves me allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever serves me serve him give him peace give him his part of risk and whoever comes after you exhaust him depress him and finish him to usne kaha mujhe to hukm hai ke jo allah ko chahne wale hain main unki khidmat karu aur jo allah ke ni chahne wale mere chahne wale hain unko bhaga 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 ke maar do and they never get me anyway so he was he listened he said yeah that is strange but then he we still after listening to this the sheikh said still i don't want you get out and he became angry and he moved his hand and he said my finger touched dunya when i was saying out it went away so from that day on i don't like to touch my food with this finger That is the reason I don't use my finger. कि उस दिन जब दुनिया ने मुझसे ये कहा मैंने कहा चलो वो बात ठीक है जो तुम कर रही हो लेकिन चलो इधर से मैं तो नहीं तुम्हें पसंद करता चलो जाओ तो मैंने जब ऐसे कहा तो मेरी उंगली लग गई उसको उस वजह से मेरा हराम तो नहीं ना ही गलत है लेकिन मेरा दिल ही नहीं चाहता घिन आती है मैं वो उंगली इस्तेमाल करूँ खाने के लिए सो डैट इज द रीजन बट थ्रू दैट स्टोरी वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड अ ग्रेट रियलिटी हमें एक बहुत बड़ी हकीकत समझ आ जाती है कि मन खादा माना फख दिमी व मन खादा माँ की फस्त फख दिमी अल्लाह ने हुक्म दिया हुआ है जो मेरी खिदमत इबादत मकसूद मुझे बनाए दुनिया उसकी खिदमत करना तो आप देख लें अम्बिया अलिया अल्लाह की दुनिया कदमों में आती है उनके उनको भी अपना हिस्सा मिलता है सलेमान अल्लाम वज किंग Rasulullah was presented dunya the mountains of gold but he didn't accept for example aulia allah they are also eating they also marry shah abdul qadir jilani imam abu hanifa they also married they also had business they also had the less or more part of dunya dunya gives them with honor with uh, with dignity they get and people like myself they are running after duniya wo bhag bhag ke 99 ke chakkar mein pade saans phool gayi hai zuban bahar nikal aayi hai yahi karte karte wo mar jate hain that's why allah jal majid who gave example of dog in the quran fa mathaluhu ka mathal al qalb those people who go after in tatruku yal has they always hamping they always their tongue is outside and as though you know they've just finished the Hundred mile race, so no matter they are sitting peacefully or actually otherwise. The dunya daro ki misal bhi aasi. Ke pas ho ya na ho, inu ne yehi kena kuch nahi hai, kuch nahi hai. Guzara hi ho raha hai. Firstly, people used to earn five hundred pound. They used to say, "I'm just surviving, paying my bills." Now they are earning thousand pound. They still the same same thing. 
Now there are 10,000 still saying something. Because the matter is not with the money, it's the inside. So remember this is one of the secrets of dunya that if you want dunya, then actually go make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your purpose and objective and dunya will come after you. And if you run after, then actually you will be running and not getting things. So the thought of dunya, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like, Allah wants a higher life for us, distracts you. Thoughts of disobedience, meaning many people are planning sin with mind. Maybe they're in Yatakaf, they plan, I am going to watch this movie on Eid day. Now this happens with the mind. I am going to do this there. They fantasize, they think, they actually plan sometimes disobedience, things which are not good. That actually distracts people away. Now this is the entire, uh, this is a, a mercy of Allah Jalla Majduhu, that even though he knows this person is planning my disobedience, but he continues blessing the person because he is doing obedience now. For example, when Shaitan was living in Jannah, Allah knew what he's going to do after. He's going to become my enemy. But at that time, because he wasn't, Allah continued blessing him. First heaven, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven. But Allah knew all from beginning that what he, he is my enemy. But because he is doing that time good, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-adal, he is blessing him. When he did really outrightly and manifest his animosity with Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal then sent him on the, and thrown him out. So thoughts of disobedience, money and all these so we can have two types of relationship of our mind with Allah negative and positive which we know now actually so there are two types of relationship with Allah Allah ke saath do tarah ka talak aapka ho sakta hai musbat bhi aur manfi bhi dimaag ka yani the relationship of the mind now, the positive interaction of the mind in relation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ab dhamaal ka ta'alak jo hai, musbat tariqa ya acha ta'alak nabi alayhi salatu wa salam se. So, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mind can be remembering the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. He, might, he can remember the seerah, he he, the mind can imagine the seerah, how to, it was at that time, etc. Thoughts of respect and honor of the Prophet ﷺ. So the mind can be in the remembrance of Rasulullah ﷺ while citing the Rul Sharif and the thoughts of honor that if I was at that time, that's how I would do, I would follow, I would obey him, I would love him, I will do this for him. The mind can do all these things. Although the body is limited, but the mind. In one of the book written by great wali and scholar of uh, Morocco, Imam Al-Imam Qadi Ayyaz Maliki, Al-Shifa. The book's name is Shifa. Cure. In that book he's written about these thoughts of respect and honor. He said there was a king and when he died, someone saw him in a dream, what happened with you? He said that I had many, many sins, I was to be punished, but just because of one thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave me. He said, what was that amal? He said, uh, when I was king, we used to have a national parade, national show of power every year, like Independence Day, brother. And my whole army got together. Every year it got together. All army would get together. 
and we people will we celebrate the independence he said once there was a, our annual parade and i got on the balcony of our palace the king's palace and i was looking up to where i could see there was army on this side infantry other horses and other he said when i saw the army this this thought came into my mind he said this thought came into my mind that when rasulullah sallallahu was in makkah and he proclaimed the the tawhid and preached to others people were stoning with him abu jahal abu lahab they were turning against him he said just this thought came in my mind i wish he was just thinking with his mind i wish i was there at that time i wish i was there and i had this army and i would have defended the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi in makkah in the streets of makkah from all these the enemy those people who were torturing or uh, debasing him in any way then he said i thought this came thought came of the taif the journey of taif of the prophet ali islam that he went there 70 kilometers away from makkah on footsteps traveling on foot 70 instead of giving water anything they ridicule and they threw stones and they poured blood out of his body instead of giving any food he said this thought was coming when i was looking at my strong army my horsemen the infantry the swords and the number hundreds and hundreds and thousand of my army showing national power this thought was overwhelming me i wish i had this army and i wish i was there living at that time i wish i was living at that time and with this i would have never let anyone glance at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam without the permission to usne kaha kaash main apni fauj ke sath udhar hota aur main agar us waqt hota taif ke waqt to kisi ko patthar to kya nabi alaihi wasallam ki taraf dekhne ki ijazat bhi na deta that you need permission to raise your eyes with to to for the prophet al islam and i would have company kaash i wish i was there in the time of hijra main makkah ke mein hota hijrat ke waqt rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to live in the cave of sor 3 days and leave his beloved city which he loved very much i wish i had this army and i was there i would make abu jahal and all others leave the city i wish i was there in the time of badr and i would help rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and protect him i wish i was there at the battle of ohod with this army this power and i would have sacrificed the army and my life and everything i wish i was so he he with this thought was just coming in his mind reminding him when he was looking at his prayer and he said it finished i didn't do anything after all the prayer and finished the, but allah subhanahu wa taala just on this my intention and thought said that you was true in your intention but you thought about my prophet respect and honor so i forgave all your sins that just because of that intention that niya and that thought so mind can do wonders because the intention you make with the mind and the brain the ma ke sath banda niyat karta hai to aap bhi achhi achhi niyatein kar sakte hain ki aap us waqt hote to kya karte aap pehle hote to kya karte if you were in that time what would you do in all the scenarios and remembering the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what would you do for example what if you get the opportunity so thoughts of respect and honor that can connect you to the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam and remembering his life as i said that many people when they do the spiritual ascension they can do with such powerfulness imagination that in actual fact they can reach back in time spiritually 
and see the Prophet al Islam and that part of Sira, actually they can see, visualize actually all this. Kai log the Savar ke saath, Murakabe me, Vake Nabi al Islam ke door me Ruhani tor par ponch ke, wo manazar dekna, Nabi al Islam ka mushahida karna, unko nasib ho jata hai. Ye bhi damagi ki khubi. Means is what is used is imagination. His soul starts from there. So thinking about how to implement Sunnah, thinking about how to convey his message. So many of you might think, oh, we wish we were there. Good, that is very good wish, the good intention. As I said, the Imam Qazi Ayaz said that this king was rewarded very highly. But uh, you already are here, and Rasulullah's mission is here. So you can help him. You can serve him even now by practicing thinking with your mind, how can I practice? And thinking, how can his message, beautiful message, reach the four corners of the world, the all corners of the world? You can think that I am going to be the one who is 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 going to be तो पैगाम देने की तो गुंजाइश है मैं किस तरह मुल्कों में जाऊं शहरों में जाऊं आई गो इन सिटीज आई गो इन डेजर्ट्स आई गो इन माउंटेंस आई गो टू सिटीज विलेजेस माय ओन कंट्री अदर कंट्रीज टू डिलीवर द मैसेज हाउ कैन आई डू आई कैन प्लान आई कैन गेट अदर पीपल टुगेदर चलो भाई मिलके करते हैं चलते हैं ये मैसेज देने के लिए यू कैन डू विद द माइंड रिस्पेक्टिंग द प्रोफेट अली सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम honor so and how to follow how to give his message further so ye ek to ye taluq hai ye dimag ki hubi this is the doing of the mind similarly also you can have a negative interaction with the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam aap ek manfi taluq bhi rakh sakte hain wo kya hai forgetfulness of him nabi ali sallam ko yaad hi na karna bhool jana shaadi ke mauke pe wo nahi yaad غمی کے موقع پہ وہ نہیں یاد ان اکیجنز آف ہیپینس ان اکیجنز آف سیڈنس ان اکیجنز آف ادر وین یو آر وید فیملی لائف وین یو آر ڈوئنگ تھنگز بٹ فوگیٹنگ ہم فوگیٹنگ ہم میننگ فوگیٹنگ ہیز سننا ہیز وے آف لائف آپ کو بھول جانا آپ تو عرش پر جا کر بھی عرش کے قریب جا کر بھی امت کو بھولے نہیں اور ہم یہاں عرش تو کیا گاڑی اچھی مل جائے مکان اچھا مل جائے دس لوگ ساتھ ہو جائے تو بھول جاتے ہیں so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi didn't forget us while he was in Miraj, the highest high in the heaven, the Arsh. And we in this world got little bit high financially, socially, and politically. We tend to think now, you know, we, we don't want to remember the Prophet Islam and don't want to obey him in those matters. They say we are independent, we are doing it things in our own way. So this is negative reaction, interaction. Thoughts of disrespect uh, of the Prophet Islam, not disrespect, his message or his actually sunnah. So for them, any even small things that later to him, one should respect. Like you should. So you did the ziyara of some of the tabarrukat last night. They are attributed. The sunnah, the beard is related to Prophet Islam, his libad, anything, the, the green dome, the imama sharif, his sunnahs, it is related to, to, to honoring everything and anything in relation to, no matter if it is a, actually just a, the dust of his feet, respecting them and honoring them. Have you not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد. I swear by this city of Makkah. Why? وأنت حل بها. Because your feet are touching this city. Imagine if Mukam Ibrahim can become Mukam Ibrahim with the footprint of Sayyidina Ibrahim, where Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم footprints were seen often, that Mukam became Riyadul Jannah. جہاں حضرت ابراہیم علیہ السلام کا قدم لگا جس پتھر پر وہ مقام ابراہیم بن گیا کعبہ شریف کے پاس 
جہاں نبی علیہ السلام کے زیادہ قدم لگے اس جگہ میں جہاں آپ گھر سے نکلتے لائک دس پلیس دائی گمبت چکن یو سی دا گرین ڈوم دیئر دیٹس ویئر دا ہاؤس آف دا پروفیٹ از دم واز اینڈ دیٹس ویئر ریاض الجنہ از تو آؤٹ سائڈ فرام دا ہاؤس ہی یوز ٹو کم ٹو ہیز مسلح کوائٹ افن سو دیٹ پلیس had very frequently touched by the feet of the Prophet Islam and now that place is known as Riyazul Jannah, the garden of Jannah. And he said, my, when he's standing on his member, because he stood on his member every Juma or uh, every, whenever he gave khutbah, he said, I can see house, the house, the kosar will be here uh, on my member, under my member. وہ حوض کوسر کی جگہ قیامت کے دن بنے گی وہ جگہ سو سو فوگیٹ فلنیس ڈس ابیڈینس اینڈ ناٹ کنوینگ ہز میسر یہ بھول ہی جانا ہم جیسے کھانے پینے کے لیے جانوروں کی طرح ہم پیدا ہوئے ہیں کھایا پیا شادی بیاہ کی وہ جو بارہ چیزیں بیان کی تھی آپ سے دوز ٹویلو تھنگ وی نیور تھنک دیٹ دا پروفیٹ علیہ السلام لیفٹ ایز امانا ٹو اس He left the deen. آپ نے دین کو ہمارے سپرد کیا جانے سے پہلے امت کے now we have this belong to رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and he said give it to the next person are we doing that or we are just actually even tearing that meaning not even acting ourselves تو خود عمل نہ کرنا تو سمجھے کہ وہ اس کو آپ خود نقصان دے رہے ہیں بجائے اس کے آگے پہنچانے کے instead of passing it on I am tearing it myself meaning going against it. So what type of relation? This is negative uh, and wrong interaction with the Prophet of Islam. You can hurt him in many ways, like um, if you do commit sin and your amal are presented to him morning and evening. Kitabu mein jis tarah hai ki subha shaam nabi alayhi salam ki bargah mein jis tarah durush sharif pesh hota hai, jis tarah bandhu ki amal. So if a person have good deed, you are making Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi happy. If you bad deed, obviously he becomes upset. <coughs> so now, as you can see from the screen, you can have two types of relation, in negative interaction, positive interaction with the Prophet Islam. With who? With the mind. Thirdly, the mind, the positive interaction of the mind in relation to human beings. تیسری چیز انسان تھے انسانوں کے ساتھ بھی آپ کا رویہ دو طرح کا ہو سکتا ہے ون از ہیونگ گڈ اپینین آف ادرس ہیلپنگ ادرس بینگ کمپیشنیٹ تھنکنگ آف دیئر ویلفیئر تھنکنگ آف دیئر آنر پروٹیکٹنگ دیئر آنر پروٹیکٹنگ دیئر ویل وشنگ ویل فار دیم ڈوئنگ گڈ فار دیم پلاننگ ٹو بینیفٹ دی ہیومینٹی in worldly terms and from akhirah term this is all positive interaction thinking how to help and support now Eid is coming how many people are thinking that there will be people there will be children who don't have clothes they are asking clothes from their parents and their mother cannot give them new clothes how many people know that they will the Eid is coming but in their house there will be not enough to cook just a meal so those people who think and help in their capacity I'm not saying it is the Rabbul Alameen who nourishes everyone for you if you can nourish one person in your village sorry the middari in Sani yet kini the yap hogi کہ آپ نے سب کو کھلانا ہے وہ تو اللہ نے لی ہوئی ہے آپ کو صرف امتحان کے لیے کچھ مال دے کے چلو تم دو چار غریبوں کو تو اپنے گاؤں میں عید کرا سکتے ہو یو کین ایکچولی میک دیم ہیو گڈ عید مے بی یو آر ویری پور ہیئر بٹ یو کین اسٹل اسٹینڈ ٹین پاؤنڈ ان کی تو عید بن جائے گی ٹین پاؤنڈ اینڈ ایف یو آر ورکنگ یو کین گیو مور ٹو ٹین فیملیز Fifteen families in your locality, in your uh, neighborhood there. So, so thinking how to benefit the creation. And the greatest benefit and favor you can do is to lead them to paradise. So giving da'wah to them, sharing the good message for them.
not becoming angry with them. That is the greatest favor you can do to anyone. The taking them forever and ever in paradise is giving them, like people say, who brought you in UK, who gives you a visa, indefinite stay or of nationality. If someone says, I have given you, you say, this person have done big favor to me. What about the person who gives you the visa of Jannah, visa of paradise? He puts a stamp of paradise. What a big favor forever and ever and ever. So giving dawa, sharing the message of deen is like this. So with the creation uh, helping. And the other is the negative interaction you can have with uh, human beings is b having bad opinion of others, really thinking evil of others, backbiting, suspicious thoughts of others, and all these sin, uh, harmful things and harmful attitudes and harmful thoughts, bad opinion. This is, um, for example, you, you are seeing a person in front of you, he might be, whatever problem he is facing, he might have problems in his house. Let's say you, fear, you face a person, he's not said salam to you. You say, oh, this person is arrogant, he doesn't even say salam or answer my salam. But you never know what he is going through. He might be going through serious problems in his house, in financially, or he might be in so much engrossed in remembrance of Allah or in some thought. He didn't even notice you. He has a different story. He is in... So a person should not have bad opinion of others. Always have good opinion that always benefits. It satisfies you and also uh, saves the other person as well. Find like how to have one person said to a sheikh, how can I have good opinion of others? He said good opinion means to find excuse for that person. I, how, I like you find excuse for yourself when you do something wrong. When you, if someone say to you, uh, oh, why didn't you answer my Islam? Oh, you know, I was just thinking about prayer. I was thinking about food. Oh, I didn't know. I was looking the other side. He said, you will find 101. So like you find excuses and other for yourself, find excuses for other people as well, and you will have good opinion. But how unjustly that for me I can find 100 excuses. Oh, I did this because of this, because of that, and this and that. There's so far fetched 100 stories I can come up with. And for other person, I say, oh no, you did this because of that. This, that's it. And the other person protests. <laughs> And say, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean that, I don't want, you say, no, 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 you mean that. So this is not good main meaning, actually, interaction of the mind, either towards planning evil for others, how to actually put uh, disputes in them, all these things. I'm just giving you the concept, so I'm not going in detail of the sins uh, here. So you can have negative interaction of the mind with people, or you can positively interact with them. Similarly, the last one, uh, the, the fourth one, the positive interaction of the mind in relation to other creation. Dusri makhluk ke saath achha zehen rakhna, mind ke saath interact karna. So what will be thinking how you can protect and save the animals, protect and save the environment, protect and save the other creation. Imam Abu Al-Qasim Qushayri, rahimahullah ta'ala, a great wali of Allah Jalla Majdu, who has written one of the very good books on Tazkiyah and Risala Qushayriya. In that he has written that uh, the high-ranking wali is called Siddiq. Who is Siddiq? Imam Qushayri, rahimahullah, likha usme, کہ سب سے بڑا ولی صدیق کیٹیگری ہوتی ہے تو وہ کون ہوتے ہیں what are their traits he written some one of the traits he written ایک ان کا وصف یہ ہوتا ہے فرمایا کہ یہ چونٹی تک کو بھی تکلیف نہیں دیتے صدیق is the one who doesn't even harm or hurt an ant let aside other animals or human beings or other people کہ انٹس کو بھی تب اس کو بھی وہ صدیق نہیں دیتے تب وہ یعنی صدیق and because prophethood is higher than 
Siddiqui. Uh, that's why Suleiman Islam, when he's coming, he took care of the ant. And like I mentioned to you yesterday about the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi coming on Fath Makkah, he took care of that dog and the uh, other uh, things, that story which I mentioned to you. So thinking how to protect and save, thinking how to create comfort and ease, how to create ease for animals even, how to create comfort for them as well, because they are the creation of Allah Jalla Majdu. So if you think, plan, you can actually, alhamdulillah, benefit and you can get. I mentioned to you the story, the woman who quenched the thirst of a dog, she was a prostitute woman, but she was forgiven by Allah Jalla Majdu. Because she created ease for that dog. A woman who tortured a cat was thrown in hellfire. Rasulullah said, because she created difficulty for an animal like cat. As I said, don't look at them as cat. Look at them as point of view of the creation of Allah Jalla It is his creation. Al Khalq wa so thinking how to create comfort and ease. Unfortunately, you see here people, even non-Muslims are doing more than actually Muslims comforting, caring for animals and things. And for example, they have many charities who are working for just animals, for example, to take care of them, dog homes and cat homes and others. And if you torture animal, you will be imprisoned or whatever. And this, this is actually Islamic teaching. This is the teaching of Ahlullah and Sufiya, actually, these things. And we are not actually doing In Rasulullah time, one time the wolf, head of the wolf, came in Medina to Manavra. Majin. to kutta, billi, kuchi, khane ke wakat aaje, to usko. So, Hazur al Islam Khidmat me Bhediya Aya, the leader, representative of the wolves, and he came as Sahaba Ikram was sitting, Prophet al Islam is sitting, and they were witnessing this a wolf, they became fear, Prophet al Islam, don't, don't fear. And he came, he paid respect to Rasulullah's feet. Aapke kadamu ke saath usne sar lagaya. Or pass adab ke saath bat gaya. The Sahaba say he was sitting with such a adab that we cannot imagine. His feet in front, not moving, and sitting like a servant in front of Rasulullah. And then he said the Prophet Islam communicated with him. He understood the language of animals and they could understand him, but Sahaba Ikram couldn't. So, but the Prophet ﷺ in translated, he said this is saying that uh, the wolves of this area around Medina and all this, um, this area surrounding suburbs in Arabia here have said that because at the moment our Prophet is living here, you can, because Prophet of Islam is the prophet of animals and angels and other creation of jinns and, and all other creatures. He is the Nabi of all, not only of human beings. So they said that because uh, uh, Rasulullah is living here, so they feel it might not be disrespectful that we are taking the goats and sheep. We come and we find any sheep or goat and we take it for our risk, that's how we, Allah has created us. But now we thought it is, maybe it's not respectful. So we would ask permission that you ask your companions to give us our share every day, one or two goats from how much ever we need, one or two, and we will never bother other goats, no matter where they are grazing, what's happening, they don't even need to look after. And they did this the whole said we are doing this, meaning they did this because of the honor, because of the respect. They can janwar bi adab ihtiram kar rahi hai, ke nabi alayhi salam wujood hai, to hum kisi cheez ko nuksaan na dein. Ye yoh inki ummat hai. 
اور حامد امت کے ساتھ کیا کر رہے ہیں ایوری ون از از ان دا امہ آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واٹ آر وی ڈوئنگ ایون ولفس آر ہیونگ مرسی اینڈ کمپیشن اینڈ ایکچولی ہی از پلاننگ دا روم سو پروفیٹ علیہ السلام اوبیسلی ہی از آلسو پروفیٹ آف دیم اینڈ پروفیٹ آف دیم سو آپ علیہ السلام فرمایا کہ یہ آپشن دے رہا ہے دیٹ دس از آپشن دا صحابہ کرام ڈیڈ مشورہ between themselves. Sahaba Ikram had a mashwara kiya. He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi whatever you command it is, if it's a command we follow, but what the wolf has proposed that we, by ourself giving one goat or whatever, how many goats from the herd to them every day, ourself, this, this is not for us. We're not going to do that. We're not going to destroy our herd. or meaning give goats, it doesn't, we don't feel good. We have earned, we, it is, we graze from very baby goats to there, and now we ourselves give to them. Now that the Prophet of Islam didn't enforce them, because you see, this is when they have it. We sometimes enforce things on people, which are really not incumbent upon them. So Rasulullah Islam didn't say, oh, you know, you must accept anything. He said, okay, it's up to you. He said to the leader of the wolf that your proposal is not accepted and uh, you take your share, whatever you can, how you are doing, there's no disrespect and thing, and I don't mind. So he said, okay. And they said, we respectfully, he got up, he again said salam and went away and uh, that, that's it. So the purpose of what I'm mentioning is that the, even with animals, with other creation, the Prophet Islam had interaction and their welfare and the actually thing. And the, even trees, he said, even in the war times, in war zones and war times, don't cut down a tree, for example. So, so we should, a Muslim should be planning how to, he can create comfort. Here, maybe you have money. Maybe you can't feed all the cats or dogs or there. Maybe in Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, there, there's no, not, no care for animals, no care for environment. Their trees are being cut down. So you can, with this little amount of money, create some comfort zone for animals, for dogs, for cats, for other things, and maybe plant some Uh, trees actually that doesn't cost a much meaning that will this will be a sadaqai jariya for you if a prostitute woman can be forgiven because of helping a dog once and if you create a house or something for there and pay them those people to look after it can be a means to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can have a negative interaction to the creation of Allah is how to destroy and kill them and cause harm and pain without any right to you. That's as well people are doing. Harming, causing pain and just for their sports, just for their enjoyment or anything. So you can have both negative or positive interaction. So now, alhamdulillah, we finished the, here, the mind's interaction. And inshallah, next time we'll carry on with the third thing, which is the heart's interaction. We covered two now, up to what? The body and mind. Jism or the maa ka taalak in charun se humne thoda thoda sikha. Ab do rege, the interaction of heart. and interaction of nafs. کہ دل کس طرح ان چاروں کے ساتھ دونوں تعلق رکھ سکتا ہے اور نفس کس طرح رکھ سکتا ہے تو یہی اسلام کا خلاصہ ہے this is summary of اسلام all اسلام is covered there there is nothing left یہ دو طرح کے تو تعلق ہے دو قدم ہے کہ نقصان نہ پچاؤ نفع پچاؤ بس and do it for pleasure of Allah and that's it Take a jazakallah if there's anything which you have not understood from today, you can ask. Ji, wait.
السلام علیکم میں اردو میں بات کرنا چاہوں گا ایک بات میں اپنے سوال سے پہلے یہ کہنا چاہوں گا کہ سب کے سامنے سب موجود ہیں کہ میں آپ کی امامت پر بھی یقین رکھتا ہوں اور آپ کی ولایت پہ بھی یقین رکھتا ہوں سوال پوچھنے کا میرا ہمیشہ سے یہ خواہش ہوتی کہ راہ مل سکے سمجھنے کا موقع مل سکے اور دل میں جو گنجائش ذہن میں جو گنجائش رہتی ہے وہ ختم ہو سکے ایک حدیث جو آج کا چونکہ تعلق انسان کا حضور آقا صلاۃ السلام کے ساتھ ہے تو ایک حدیث میں نے کافی دیر پہلے سے پڑھ رکھی تو میں اس پہ آپ کی روشنی چاہتا ہوں کہ نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ میں تم میں دو چیزیں چھوڑے جا رہا ہوں ان دو چیزوں میں دو مختلف رائے ہیں ایک ہے قرآن کتاب اللہ اور دوسری اپنی ضروریت اپنی اولاد اور کچھ لوگوں کے مطابق کو کتاب اللہ اور سننا ہے تو میں ان ان دونوں کے حوالے سے جو انسان کا تعلق ہے اور اسپیشلی ضروریت محمد کا اہل سنت کے حوالے سے جو موقف ہے وہ جاننا چاہتا ہوں بہت شکریہ حدیث شریف میں جو چیزیں ہوتی ہیں وہ موقع محل کے مطابق ہوتی ہیں مطلب کیا بات ہو رہی تھی اس وقت لوگ کیا کہہ رہے تھے کون سی غلط فہمی نبی علیہ السلام دور کر رہے تھے تو وہ یہ نہیں ہوتا کہ بھئی ہمیں حدیثیں لکھ کے پہنچا دی گئیں کہ آپ علیہ السلام بیٹھ کے تقریر کر رہے تھے وہ کوئی واقعہ پیش آتا ہے کوئی سٹوری ہوتی ہے اس کے پیچھے کوئی وجہ ہوتی ہے کوئی جنگ ہوتی ہے کوئی غلط فہمی ہوتی ہے کوئی الزام ہوتا ہے کوئی سوال کرتا ہے تو اس کے جواب میں جو آپ علیہ السلام فرماتے اس کو حدیث کہتے ہیں تو وہ تب تک سمجھ نہیں آتی جب تک کہ وہ بھی پیچھے بندے کو سمجھ نہ ہو کہ وہ موقع محل کیا تھا تو مثلاً بندے سستی کر رہے ہیں کچھ لوگ مثال کے طور پر کسی کام میں تو نبی علیہ السلام اس کے بارے میں تنبی کریں گے تو مثلاً اگر کوئی یہ پوچھ رہا ہے کہ بعد میں آپ کے بعد ہم کیا کریں گے تو یعنی کیا کرنا چاہیے ہمیں کہ کون سی چیزوں سے ہمیں ہدایت زیادہ ملے گی یا رکھنا چاہیے تو آپ علیہ السلام فرمایا مثلاً تم میری تم اللہ کی کتاب اور میرے طریقے پہ چلو گے تو گمراہ نہیں ہوگے تو ایک وقت میں مثلاً دیکھا آپ نے محسوس کیا کہ لوگ ان کے اہل بیت اتحار کے ساتھ آپ علیہ السلام کو علم دے دیا گیا پہلے ہی آپ کو یہ لوگ کئی ظلم کریں گے یزید آئے گا فلاں آئے گا تو نبی علیہ السلام نے امت کو گمراہی سے بچانے کے لیے تاکہ یہ گمراہ نہ ہوں تو انہوں نے اپنا نقصان نہ کریں شفقتاً تو آپ نے محسوس کیا کہ کئی لوگ ادب نہیں کریں گے تو وہ باوجود ہے کہ قرآن پر عمل کریں گے سنت کے کہیں ظاہری معنی پر عمل کریں گے لیکن ان کو سنت کی سمجھ نہیں ہوگی ایک ہے قرآن اور سنت وہ جو ایک حدیث آپ کا وہ تو قرآن اور حدیث کا متن یعنی وہ جو ٹیکسٹ جو آ جاتا ہے لکھی چیز ایک ہے قرآن اور سنت کی سمجھ تو تیسری بھی جو آپ علیہ السلام دوسری میں فرمایا وہ بندوں کا ذکر کر رہے ہیں کہ اہل بیت اتحار اہل بیت اتحار مطلب یہ کہ جو آپ علیہ السلام کے گھر والے ہیں اما عائشہ ہے ام صدیقہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سعیدہ حفصہ ہیں اہل بیت میں بھی یہ سارے شامل ہیں سعیدہ علی ہیں فاطمہ سعیدہ فاطمہ تو زہرا ہے مطلب یہ کہ قرآن اور سنت کی وہ تشریح جو یہ صحابہ اور اہل بیت اتحار جو سمجھیں گے بھائی مطلب مفہوم بھی اس کا پکڑنا تب جا کے تم نجات پاؤ گے ویسے صرف قرآن اور سنت کے متن تو دونوں کو آپ ملا کے دیکھیں گے تو یہ مت سمجھ آئے گا کہ مطلب اس کا یہ ہوگا ملا کے کہ ہاں متن تو قرآن اور سنت کا استعمال ہوگا اور سمجھ جو ہے اہل بیت کرام اور صحابہ کی ہوگی اس طرح آپ پر چیزوں کو ایک ایک کر کے نہیں نماز کے قریب مت جانا اب دیکھیں وہ کس حالت میں کیا کہا جا رہا ہے کیوں کہا جا رہا ہے تو اس طرح آپ علیہ السلام نے فرمایا میرے صحابہ ستاروں کی ماند ہیں جو ان کے پیچھے چلے گا ہدایت پا جائے گا تو مطلب آپ اس کو بھی جمع کریں اس کو بھی جمع کریں اہلی حدیث کو قرآن اور سنت والی کو بھی اہل بیت والی بھی, بھی صحابہ والی کو ایک ایک مطلب واضح ہوتا ہے کہ وہ ہدایت پہ وہ بندہ رہے گا جو قرآن اور سنت کی اتباع کرے گا لیکن قرآن اور سنت کا مطلب وہ لے گا جو میرے اہل بیت اور صحابہ نے سمجھا ہے مجھ سے اگر وہ اپنا مطلب بیان کرے گا گوگل پہ جا رہا ہے ادھر جا رہا ہے ادھر 
अरबी पढ़ पढ़ के अपना मतलब समझ रहा है तो वो उसकी कोई गारंटी नहीं है वो हदायत पे है वो कहेगा मसलन ये जितने अलकायदा दाइश ये जो दूसरे लोग हैं ये कहते हैं हम कुरान सुन्नत पे चल रहे हैं लेकिन वो कुरान सुन्नत के मतन पे ज़ाहरी मतलब के गोया चल रहे हैं पता सही उनको समझ नहीं कि भाई इसका सही आगे मतलब क्या था उस वजह से वो फितना पैदा हो रहा है तो इस तरह आइंदा भी कोई हदीस समझनी हो कोई आयत समझनी हो तो उस मौजू के मुतल फिर वो जितनी हदीस होती हैं वो सारी इकट्ठी की है फिर जाके समझ आती है कि ये आप इस्लाम क्या इसमें क्या मंशा क्या मकसद था वो ये नहीं होता कि भाई एक बात कर दी अब वही है क्योंकि वही हस्ती ने फिर वो दूसरी बातें में की होती हैं तो उनकी रोशनी में वो उनको समझा जाता है तो एक में किताबों का जिक्र है किताब और सुन्नत हदीस शरीफ का दूसरी हदीसों में दो शख्सियतों का जिक्र है अहल बैत और सहाबा तो किताबों में तो कि वो इल्म होता है और शख्सियतें समझती हैं और यानी समझ उनमें होती है तो दोनों को जो मिला के चलेगा इसलिए हम इमाम अबू हनीफा इमाम शाफी इमाम मालिक इमाम अहमद इब्न हम्बल और दूसरे बुज़ुर्गों के पीछे चलते हैं कि इन्होंने सहाबा से अहल बैत से ये समझे हुए थे मतलब कुरान हदीस का इसलिए हम आज जो फॉलो कर रहे हैं वो वही है इस तरह अलिया अल्लाह के पीछे क्यों चलते हैं कि ये जो अलिया अल्लाह थे इन्होंने बड़े जो दर्जे में जाके सहाबा से समझा के वलायत क्या है तो हम आज पे उन्हीं के तरीक़ों पे कादरिया है नक्शबंदिया है वो चल रहे हैं तो दोनों तरह ये मफहूम के लिए मतलब के लिए जो है तो बाकी वो ये ये चीज़ सब सहाबा अहल बैत थार कुरान सुन्नत मतलब यानी सब चीज़ सारी इसमें शामिल हैं क्योंकि वो क्राइटेरिया बना दिए गए पैमाना बना दिए गए क्योंकि नबी आसलाम ने बरह रास्त दो ही हस्तियों को समझाया अल्लाह का दीन अपने घर वालों और सहाबा कराम को तो बस फिर यही लोग समझते हैं दूसरे आज भी कुरान हदीस गोरे भी पढ़ रहे हैं दूसरे भी लेकिन वो अपना अपना मतलब अपने अपने कहानियाँ अपने अपने अरबी के मुताबिक तशरी कर रहे हैं इसलिए कोई गारंटी नहीं कि वो हदायत पर है ये चीज़ है तो बाकी आप इमामत वलायत का ये कोई बात नहीं होती है तो अल्लाह जल्लमजू क़्यामत वाले दिन बताएगा कि कौन मेरा दोस्त है कौन दुश्मन है कौन वली है कौन नहीं है वो फैसले का दिन ना बाकी अच्छा गुमान मैं आपके बारे में अच्छा गुमान रखता हूँ आप मेरे बारे में रखते हैं तो अच्छी बात है लेकिन यकीनी तौर पर किसी को नहीं पता होता सवाए नबी को या नबी किसी को बता दे कोई ये अपना उनको इसलिए अशरा मुबरा उनको कहते हैं बाकी तो हम तो सारे आम तौर पर गुनागार लोग हैं अल्लाह पाक सिर्फ ये है कि कुछ लोगों के गुना छुपाए हुए हैं तो वो नेक लगते हैं कुछ लोगों के जाहिर हैं तो वो अपना नेक नहीं लगते इतनी बात है जो Assalamu alaikum sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Um first of all um uh, I would like to thank you for a beautiful le- letter. Okay, uh sure. the special for me um will help a lot because I came from the other other reality. Um you spoke from very beginning about interaction of mind with uh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh you get you uh you gave uh two examples of um positive interactions and uh, negative interaction and we saw that we uh, you saw, um you said uh, there is uh, one of the examples of positive interaction is a presence awareness uh, thinking about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the dikkah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, i would like to, uh, to ask you to uh, speak about presence because i didn't get that point really well presence of us no um presence when you when you said about uh, interaction of mind with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you said one of the aspects of positive interaction of mind uh, with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a presence i didn't get that point really well right you didn't get the presence part okay i'll mention presence mean as you can hear uh, or listen from the word present means mawjood meaning the something is fresh present if someone is here it means fresh 
If something is present in your mind, it means it's fresh, alive, you can think of it. So presence of Allah, Allah is with us. But we sometimes are not with Allah. Allah is present with us, that is for sure. He says, that He is with us. But uh, we are not with Him. How? So presence of Allah, what I mean? These have three elements. You can have presence of Allah. It will consist of these one, two, three. That Allah is with me, thinking that Allah is with me, thinking about His presence, that He is with me. Number two, Allah is all hearing, He is hearing whatever I say. And He is seeing whatever I am doing. And He knows what I am going through, for example. And so the thinking like this, this will be, so Allah is with me, watching me, hearing me. When this thought comes fresh, that actually means the presence of Allah Jalla Like you think someone is present with you, that's what presence means. But you, how you think Allah is present with you, you can think through His quality, His knowledge, that He knows everything you're going through, He hears everything, He sees everything, and uh, things like this is what's meant by the presence. And when this thought is kept present in the mind more and more, we can say this person lives in the presence of Allah. And when this thought goes away, then you are not present anymore as that though, from your point of view. So that, that's what, and it is very, very essence of worship because the worship the essence is presence of Allah that actually, that is the reality of worship, that Allah is with you, uh, the God is listening to me, hearing to you feel presence. Let's say if I am on the phone, look here, there is the phone. I am not seeing the person, okay? Uh, I'm only hearing the person. So I say, Assalamu alaikum, he says, Wa alaikum salam. I'm hearing. So I know, when I know he's hearing, I become alert. Oh, they say he is present now. Present from hearing point of view. Then I speak with thought, I speak consciously. I say, and if he, no matter, I'm sitting on the sofa, I have my t shirt on, but I'm saying, yes, I am fine thing. But if it is a video call, then oh, you stand up. Oh, I mean, now a person is seeing me, I want to be in a place. Actually, I mean, a good thing. You understand? So different, these qualities have different effect on the person. So yeah, this is, inshallah, you will learn that in the purification course and spiritual interaction. Jazakallah, mashallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hazrat Sahib, you briefly mentioned uh, Prophet Sallallahu feet Mubarak. In relation to the feet and in particular the blessed sandals, uh, on some of our hats we have the copy of the sandal. Some of our other Muslim brothers have a great objection to that. How do we answer that objection that this is a new innovation you've got, the Sahaba never did this, so where has this come from? How do we answer that, Zakala? The thing is that um, these people who question or ask, maybe uh, they don't know uh, the, uh, the actual, uh, you may say, it is an image, uh, image of the sandal. And I already mentioned to you that Allah honored the image of the, or the photograph, you may say, uh, of the feet of Sayyidina Ibrahim there as you say you put your f head in the feet of Hazrat Ibrahim's image of sandal not sandal but, f but feet so when you ask this person when you go to when you go round the Kaaba and it is the command is وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُسَلَّى that now you pray two rakat and put your head Everyone is trying as better I can get exactly opposite and near. So you are putting your head in the, not the feet, but the footprint of Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam, which is just a picture, meaning just an image. He placed his foot and that's he took it out and it's just a print. 
So same objection can come there. That oh, this is a this is a, a foot a print, and why you are praying there? This is shirk. So they say this is shaitanic tohid. This is your tohid, not Allah's tohid. Otherwise, Rasulullah Sallam would have thrown it out. Oh, this footprint. Why we should prostrate in front of it? Similarly, so this has uh, actually, and this is the footprint, or you may say the picture or the image of the sandal or actually feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is even higher than Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. So it is an honor, it is a crown, can be a crown. If you, someone doesn't want, he doesn't keep, but he have no right to objection, because you can say, you, meaning this is the dalil, very clear dalil, which we have of the footprint that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also the, uh, you may say, the <coughs> Safa and Marwa, where we run, why we run? Because the, the same, on that place, the footprints of Sayyida Hajra has been placed. It, they have touched that. Between Safa and Marwa are separate. But we don't just stay on Safa and Marwa. We, why we follow and we honor? It's a Hajj ritual. Why we honor that place? Because footsteps, even we can't see the image of Hazrat Hajra's footsteps friends now, but still we are honoring it. You can say, oh, you are honoring the footsteps of a woman. You are committing shirk or bid'ah ah or anything actually. Say that if this is the thing, then actually what about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa feet? For us it is an honor, it's a decoration. You, if you, it's not a farz, it is not sunnah, it is not actually something like this, but the Sahaba Ikram, Rizwan wa alayhim ajma'in, they did honor the relics of the Prophet al-Islam, they didn't let his even saliva fall down, they didn't let his water of wudu, they got water of wudu used by Rasulullah and actually would uh, actually take it. And some who couldn't, they would touch the hand of the other who have and actually. So this is all the hadith are full with it. So these are people who, it's a Wahhabi philosophy, Salafi philosophy, and it's ending up in form of Daesh and this killing in London. Now they are themselves destining, there is Saudi Arabia, they say, oh no, no, we don't have anything. And they are following their philosophy. They say, this is our support, this is our people. Now, because the result has come out, they say, we don't want to actually. So now they're seeing an evil. So there, in the world, there are two types of, there is a war, you may say, of ideas, of understanding. One is the way of awliya Allah and Ahl Sunnah, and one is the way of the, these actually self-made people of Salafism and Wahhabism. And all these actually things come from them. The Ahl Sunnah way is the moderate way, in the middle way. They just do what the Sahaba did. They actually, and what, any example they can find. And as I say, in this case, we can find example there. Secondly, how can they say that when Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid, radiallahu anhu, had the hair of the Prophet al-Islam put in his cap, now, where was the hair from? Body, from beard, from head? We don't know as such, actually. But they said that it is in history that Khalid ibn Walid anhu was a great companion. And he, once in the, during the war, he commanded the army to attack, and it was dangerous to attack. And the, some of the Sahaba asked that, why are you asked to, to attack? At that time, there was no reason to attack. He said, because my cap has fallen down and my cap has a hair of the strand of the Prophet Islam and I fear that the kuffar will pick up and this hair will be disrespected. Then the Sahaba said, then even if our lives are sacrificed, then it is less. You did very good. Even we could have sacrificed our lives for the hair of Rasulullah to protect and to end. So here they can have very clear, obvious examples in Sahaba, like many, many other. Khalid ibn Walid, Kaur kisi ne nahi lagaya aap al-Islam ka sar mubarak, yani baal mubarak topi mein, to aap ne woh bhi lagaya. To is tarah yeh adab aur ehtiram, yeh cheezhe tab samaj aati hain, jab dil mein mahabbat ho. Mahabbat hi sahi na ho, 
तो फिर ये चीज़ें समझ नहीं आती यू कॉन्ट अंडरस्टैंड द एक्शन ऑफ अ लवर एंड अ पर्सन एंड एक्शन ऑफ अ हेटर अ हेटर कैन नेवर अंडरस्टैंड एक्शन ऑफ लवर जो नफरत करता है वो मोहब्बत वाले की अमल नहीं समझ सकता इस तरह उसको उसको नहीं समझ आती तो ये चीज़ें हैं तो इसमें कोई ऐसे हर्ज नहीं ना ज़रूरी है ना फ़र्ज है ना वाजिब ना सुनना यू हैव यू रिस्पेक्ट इन अ पर्टिकुलर वे नो वन सेज दैट बट टू रिस्पेक्ट एंड ऑनर थिंग्स एट्रीब्यूटेड टू प्रॉफिट अल इस्लाम और एनी प्रॉफिट एनी वली इट इज़ एक्चुअली हजर असवद द काबा शरीफ ओल आर स्टोन वाई वी रिस्पेक्ट दैम वाई वी खिफ हजर असवद so it is because the of actually what the prophet al islam had uh, interaction uh, with it as well, as well and um, moreover if you read the verse of quran allah subhanahu wa taala says in the quran um, about masjid al aqsa masjid al aqsa allazi barakna hawlahu masjid al aqsa allah subhanahu allazi asra bi abdihi لَيْلًا مِنَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ الْأَقْصَى That Allah took the Prophet ﷺ from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa and said, what is Masjid al-Aqsa? What is special? Allah di barakna hawlahu That this is a place Allah has blessed it in its surroundings are blessed. You see the thing should be mentioned that there is barakah in the masjid. You see, Allah di barakna hawlahu. It should be Allah di barakna fi fiha fi masjid, not hawlahu. The baraka is in the masjid, not outside. But here Allah is saying, outside the place is blessed. That's why. And what is outside of the mosque? The graves of Ambiya, Ikram. The actually the remains of Ambiya, Ikram. The last Bahadur said. Uh, Our brothers, uh, I was mentioning to the uh, Dr. Aziz yesterday that my five of our brother went to Masjid al-Aqsa for dawa for etikaf. They coming down after two days, and they said that uh, after 40 years, first time the Mukam, the Mazar of Sayyida Maryam, they said they will open, and they gave them the opportunity to do the Majlis of Zikr there for this celebration. चालीस साल बाद सईद मरियम द मदर ऑफ जीजस हर थोम हैज बीन ओपन एंड आवर ब्रदर्स हैव द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डू मजलिस ऑफ जिक्र एंड इट वाज क्लोज आफ्टर देन अगेन फिर वो बंद कर दिया गया तो वो जगह में इतनी इतनी बरकत वाली चीज़ें हैं सईद मरियम मज़ार है सईद इब्राहिम सईद इसमाही नॉट इसमाइल बट इसहाक सईद याकूब एंड ऑल अदर थिंग्स एट्सट्रा 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 तो ये उनका उन्होंने कहा आपको पसंद नहीं तो आप ना करें हम कोई साहब पर ज़बरदस्ती कर रहे हैं तो आप गोरों के सिग्नेचर एडिडस का फिर रहे हैं लेके नाइक का ले रहे हैं हम कभी कहा है हमने आप क्या आप उसको आपको वो पसंद है तो वो आप वो करें हमने कहा है कभी आपने टोपी या कपड़ा ये नाइक का क्यों पहना ये सुन्नत साहबा ने पहना कभी इस ऐसे ब्रांड्स का नो दे आर डूइंग इट आउट ऑफ लव बिकॉज इट्स अ क्वालिटी वो क्वालिटी उसकी अच्छी है वी थिंक द क्वालिटी ऑफ द नालैन शरीफ इज़ वेरी वेरी हायर फॉर अस दिस इज़ द ब्रांड तो ये ये तो अपनी अपनी पसंद की बात है ये अच्छा माशा हजरत साहब यस regarding um maybe animals and other creation if one for example maybe in you know their youth they harmed animals or trees or plants uh, and then made tauba but then the animals and trees and plants were burned or died how do they then know that their tauba is accepted and that they will not have to uh, account for on judgment day yes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the quran about tauba then this that it actually removes all sins meaning actually the, the sin get totally if uh, on the day of judgment if you don't sincere tauba 
then Allah Jalla Majduhu will compensate those things uh, on the day of judgment from himself. From himself. So if it is like a, if you've done something wrong to human beings, you can, meaning, uh, do favor to him, send sawab and reward to him, reward to him, for them praying something, giving sadaqa, and um, the, alhamdulillah, that's benefits, and doing tawba, so that, that, but still, he will be given a right on the day of judgment, and if your tawba is sincere, you really repented, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compensate on your behalf, whatever make that person happy. But if it's animal, that's fine. I mean, if you've done toba, that's fine. Uh, you, you can't send a reward to an animal. I've read the Quran for this dog or anything, actually, because they are not living now. They uh, are not in barzakh as such, meaning they nigh and they got up on the day of judgment and thing. So for if a person have wronged anything and they've died or the plant has been burned, they just need to sincerely repent. It's the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then and that's it. Fine. Allah with his father um, forgives the person. But for human being, as I say, it is different matter. Any other questions? In the hadith also it's mentioned that the Prophet Islam mentioned that if someone borrows money from someone and he doesn't even he dies as a martyr, as a shaheed, he will not be, that right will still be upon him. But in another hadith, it's mentioned, I bought 100,000 pounds from you to do business. Now I did business. Somehow, someone defrauded me, ran away with all money. Or it became uh, waste or burnt. Fire came and fire burnt. Now I don't have that money to pay you, for example, uh, from my pocket or whatever. Well, nor I have that money because that's where. So Prophet Islam said, if someone borrows money and their wealth is burnt or drowned in sea or anything, and they had the intention to give back, Allah Azza wa Jal on day of judgment will compensate on your behalf for that person. Allah will, because that person will come with a claim on the day of judgment, oh, this person borrowed 100,000 and I want 100,000 virtues of his. Allah says, okay, here are. But Allah will give from himself his own treasure, not from you, because you, it was not your fault that it actually. So this is not a law of jungle. Allah is very merciful. When a person turns to him, Allah finds a way for him. He is more merciful than 70 mothers. Imagine. If you go to a mother and you are sincere and you want, she will do whatever is in her capacity to help you. Allah will do more even. So all you need to worry is how sincere, how serious you are in repentance and your relationship. Rest, leave to Allah. He will deal with it. Okay, Jazakallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu. Bismillah, inshallah, we're going to take a um, 10 minute break and we're going to re reconvene at 15. We're going to take a 15 minute break um, beyond of today, then we're going to have a breakout session. So, 4 um, 35, reconvene here.